Puzzles throughout the Legend of Zelda series have always been very mind-blowing, cryptic, and very enjoyable. If you ask me, the puzzles of a Zelda game are one of the most important parts. So many memorable things about past games such as Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess were their puzzles. From having to shift gigantic blocks across sheets of ice in order to unlock a door, to simultane- simultane- <sighs> simultaneously controlling two colossal stone guardians in order to proceed to the Master Sword in Twilight Princess, all the way to the often debated water level system within the Water Temple in Ocarina of Time. My point here is that puzzles are a must for Zelda games, and of course, with the most recent release, Breath of the Wild, we got a bunch of new puzzles. But they were a little different to the typical Zelda puzzle, but not in a bad way. I personally really loved all of Breath of the Wild's puzzles, from quick and snappy tasks to acquire a Korok seed, to puzzles that blend in with the elements, to the divine beast mechanics used to move and control each beast in order to progress through the dungeon all the way to the gyro puzzles found within the Sheikah Shrines. Whilst the puzzles are very different to what we have known from the past, they are still definitely up to the same standard, and I personally believe that the ideas and designs behind Breath of the Wild's puzzles are genius. And whilst Breath of the Wild is still the new Zelda game, I want to talk about some of my favourite things within the game now that I have a good take on the entire game, and you've probably noticed this with some of my recent videos. We've looked at the music, a key item to the game, and and even the most beautiful locations in the game. So, here are my thoughts and feelings towards why I believe the puzzles in Breath of the Wild are absolutely genius. To begin the video off, let's look at all the different kinds of puzzles we are given in Breath of the Wild. Firstly, there are two main groups when it comes to the types of puzzles, the open and outdoors puzzles and the Sheikah Shrine puzzles. Whilst they both share similarities at times, they are two different kinds of puzzles. The open ones have more of a focus on the environment and location, along with being on the more simplistic side, and the shrine puzzles be more enclosed and challenging, creatively speaking, with a heavy focus on the Sheikah Slate Ruin abilities. We will begin by taking a look at the open and free puzzles found out and about during your adventure in Hyrule. These open air puzzles, if you will, are 99% of the time connected to a Korok seed, which actually gives the player a bit of motivation to go and complete them. They are all incredibly simple, and I don't think anyone could really argue against that. Venturing across the land will have you come across a wide variety of these open puzzles. Some will come in the form of a block puzzle that functions exactly like a jigsaw puzzle, to puzzles that are as simple as having to drop an apple or egg down in front of a little statue. The main thing about these to note is that they are without a doubt the most simple form of a puzzle in the Zelda series, but I believe this was very intentional. We know the developers could have easily dropped a a bunch of their usual types of puzzles out and about, but they didn't. They made them so easy that anyone could figure them out, and this is because of the open air world style. Hyrule and Breath of the Wild is massive. Over two years into the game, with over 1,100 hours played, and I still find new locations here and there, and to avoid the world getting boring during all of that exploration, you know, as boring as exploring a breathtaking fantasy land can get, they filled it to the brim with loads of small and simple puzzles that on average should only take about a minute or so to complete. But the reason they chose these simple to take on puzzles over filling the world with more complex puzzles is due to the open world nature of the game. Picture this, you've just left the Shrine of Resurrection and set foot into the Kingdom of Hyrule. You're wandering around and exploring, then all of a sudden you run into a block slider puzzle, a classic staple puzzle in the Zelda series. It takes you say 10, 15 or even 20 minutes to complete and you're rewarded with a Korok seat. Whilst that may sound all good and dandy, think about the other 899 seeds you have to find from there. Granted, not all 900 seeds are acquired via puzzles, 
but a good majority are. Now, the time it takes to complete a more complex puzzle like that will vary with each player, but they definitely don't take one or two minutes like shooting down some balloons do. Now, I'm bringing up these exact points because I remember back in 2017, when I first played Breath of the Wild, I complained about this a little, and I had a good few rants about how the world is filled with small and unchallenging puzzles, but with time, I've come to realise how important it was that they dumbed the puzzles down. These little puzzles are ones you can notice and have done in seconds. Puzzles that you can come back to if you are missing something that is needed to beat the puzzle. Hell, I still have a few of the statue puzzles marked on my map that I need to go back to at some point with an apple in order to grab the Korok seed. Big classic Zelda puzzles would be too distracting for the open world of Hyrule and just wouldn't blend in with the game at all. Something I generally admire about the open puzzles in Breath is how well they blend into the actual environment. Tree stumps, flowers, hollowed out trees, rocks, and it just goes on and on. This is something I personally believe gets very overlooked. Whilst these puzzles may become repetitive and be by far more simple than usual, it makes perfect sense and actually makes the experience of exploring Hyrule 100 times better and more interactive. It creates curiosity for one. I can't tell you how many times I was paragliding around and saw a rock pattern from a distance that intrigued me so much that I just had to go over and see what was up. The same applies to seeing the jigsaw block puzzles on a mountainside and all over the land. They encourage you to explore and give you a little something to do whilst exploring. Of course, there is also the puzzles found within the Shiga Shrines. They took a different approach to the open air puzzles and were closer to what a traditional Zelda puzzle would be, but they do have their own unique factors. These puzzles tend to have a heavy focus on the Sheikah Slate Ruin abilities, which isn't anything new as in past games, puzzles did often revolve around a specific key item, some good examples being random statues found across the world in Twilight Princess that required the Dominion Rod to move an item the player didn't get until later in the game, which actually makes these statues a bit redundant until the Dominion Rod was acquired. Breath of the Wild essentially fixed this, as whenever you come across a shrine, you will already be kitted out with the necessary rune abilities to tackle it. This could be seen as a good or bad thing. On one side of the spectrum, you will no longer have puzzles or parts of the game that you can't actually interact with until you have something from later in the game, but on the other side of that spectrum, you are basically handed all of your tools and items from the get-go, which could be seen as a little bit too easy. But something the shrine puzzles got absolutely spot on is the amount of ways you can complete them. Traditionally, puzzles would only have one specific way to complete them and progress, like a padlock or keyhole. Only one specific set of movements or placements would work, but Breath of the Wild basically evolved what a Zelda puzzle is. They made many of the puzzles have two, three, four, hell, sometimes even up to five different and unique possible ways to complete them, and this was honestly amazing. More often than not, there would be an intended way to complete it, or an obvious way, but there was also nearly always at least one other way to beat it. The game encourages creativity, and let's just say players got creative. If you're a fan of glitch videos or mechanic breaking videos related to The Legend of Zelda, then you may have already seen some of what I'm about to show you. Due to the creative opportunities in Breath of the Wild, many players found some insane and wacky ways such as bomb glitches to beat shrines quickly, and you've got to applaud the people who first discovered these methods. But it's not just the glitches and breaking mechanics that deserve some praise, although they do definitely deserve their praise. It's all just creativity in general. Throughout my many playthroughs of Breath of the Wild, I found myself experimenting and trying out unconventional ideas to try and tackle these certain puzzles. I always found myself absolutely amazed when one of my ideas actually worked, because I'm used to only one certain way working. From stacking blocks to make towers to climb, to launching myself in the air to beat gaps. The point is, these shrines offered so many ways to beat them. Basically, as long as you find a way to that monk at the end of the shrine, you beat it. Doesn't matter how. As well as that, I felt like they were generally, creatively excellent. The rune abilities were utilised superbly. A good example of this would be the electricity shrines, my favourite being the Daco Cheesy shrine. It was great fun, and I bet all the science nerds out there loved this one too. You had to connect up electric currents with different conductors provided to you. It was so cool. All in all, the Sheikah Shrine's puzzles were superb, and the amount of creativity that they encouraged just has to be admired in my opinion.
That's my thoughts towards the puzzles individually, but something else I wanted to briefly cover is just how well the puzzles fit in and blend into the world. The open ones use the environment to their advantage, the shrine puzzles use the Sheikah technology to their advantage, the environment of the shrines. To sort of conclude the video, I loved and adored how well the puzzles were done in Breath of the Wild. They were not always complex and intricate puzzles, rather, they were simple but yet creative. They offer and encourage a creative mind, and I really admire that work from the developers. Thanks a ton for checking out the video, I really hope you enjoyed it, and be sure to let me know what you thought of the puzzles in Breath of the Wild down below. We are currently approaching my goal of 10,000 subscribers at the time of recording this video, so if you did enjoy this one, it would be highly appreciated if you could give the video a like, share, and maybe even subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. A huge thank you goes out to all of my wonderful and amazing Patreon supporters, as your support really helps me to keep making these videos as often as possible. So special thanks to Hexovian, Lenarko1, Keitala, Karika, Sephira Sky, Daniel Kilman, Nerislov13, Parky Doggo, Arlie Quinn, M, Chris Simpson, Andrew, and Brett Harris. Your support is extremely helpful and very much appreciated. Thank you so much. Again, I hope you all enjoyed the video, and until the next time, I've been Hyrule Gamer.